I'm Staff Sergeant Carmen Cordova. Join Petty Officer Ron Flanders and me on Navy Marine Corps News. This week, meet the crew of USS Arden, forward deployed protecting the Fifth Fleet from the threat of mines. We'll take you to Detroit for an up-close look at the hottest new cars available to sailors and Marines at the North American International Auto Show. Denver and Green Bay go head-to-head -head in Super Bowl 32. Fleet sailors give us their predictions. Look for these stories and more on Navy Marine Corps News. This week on Navy Marine Corps News, meet the crew of USS Arden, forward deployed and protecting the 5th Fleet from the threat of mines. We'll take you to the Motor City for an up-close look at the hottest new cars available to sailors and Marines at the North American International Auto Show. And Denver and Green Bay go head-to-head -head in Super Bowl 32. Fleet sailors give us their predictions. These stories and more next on Navy Marine Corps News. Hi, my name is Armando Bazana, UAW, plant chairman, Dearborn Assembly Plant. And I'm Tom Nichols, the manufacturing manager here at Dearborn Assembly, and we'd like to thank all the sailors and Marines for all their hard work. Welcome to Navy Marine Corps News. I'm Petty Officer Ron Flanders. And I'm Staff Sergeant Carmen Cordova. We begin this week with a special visit by the Deputy Secretary of Defense, John Hamry. Deputy Sec Def Hamry celebrated Martin Luther King Jr. Day at Marine Barracks, Washington with some of the Corps' future leaders, the young Marines. That's right. Now Lance Corporal David Anarino brings us that story. The Young Marines is a program supported by the Marine Corps for kids ages 8 to 18. It offers opportunities for new experiences, adventures, and challenges. Recently, the Deputy Secretary of Defense, John Hamry, visited with these bright children to talk about their future and to ask them how they felt about the program. Tell me about your classes. Um, they're we, have, we learn military knowledge, of course, and um, they teach us certain things, how to wear the proper uniform. The young Marines learn the same values taught to all Marines in boot camp. It told me integrity, it told me discipline, and to get along with others. Parents involved with the program agree it's a great success. She's more outspoken in certain things. She's not as shy as she used to be. She was real timid at first. For the Marines who give their time for the young Marines, it's a very rewarding experience. Rewarding? It's definitely got to be their faces. And also when you know you've taught them something, after a couple months down the road, you hear them teaching a younger, young Marine. Same things you taught them. In honor of Martin Luther King Day, the young Marines put on a play for the deputy sec def. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we're free at last. Following the play, deputy sec def Hamry explained the link between Dr. King's philosophy and the young Marines. To look for the best in other people and to build their dignity and not tear them down. That's what Dr. King was all about, and I think that's what young Marines are about. Frankly, that's what old Marines are about. Young Marines is a great program that's been giving children a taste of the Corps since 1979. Lance Corporal David Anarino, Navy Marine Corps News. You know, it's great to see the Secretary take some time out to remember and celebrate Dr. King's birthday. Yeah, he really said it there. You want to talk about reflecting on values. Mm -hmm. What a day to do it. And we've got some core values, too, in the Navy and Marine Corps, and it's a good day to pass those on on our courage and commitment to the young children who may grow up to be sailors and Marines in the future. Absolutely. Now, the future of the Navy came a little closer recently at Newport News, Virginia, where a pre-commissioning milestone was reached for the Navy's next supercarrier, Harry S. Truman. Working in a cold January downpour, Newport News Shipbuilding and members of the Truman Pre-Commissioning Unit Flight Deck Crew tested and certified the ship's steam propulsion catapult system. The test simulated the launching of an aircraft from the flight deck by shooting specially built sleds ranging from 9,000 to 95,000 pounds off the carrier and into the James River. The people that were firing the catapult, the people that were hooking up the catapult were all Navy sailors. We're hand in hand with Newport News to test that catapult and essentially take the ship away from Newport News, get her commissioned and get her out to sea. Although it may seem like a lot more work needs to be done to finish building Truman, the ship is very close to being ready to go to sea. We're about five months away from uh, going down the channel for the first time. 
early June is when we will uh, go to see for builders' trials. And then shortly thereafter, we'll, uh, uh, the insured board will come aboard and we'll do the acceptance trials in late June of this year. Definitely a successful test. You know, and a lot of countries have tried to build ships like Harry S. Truman, but of course, nobody has that good old American know-how. No, you can't beat that. And there's certainly mm -hmm. a lot of teamwork involved there. Mm -hmm. Needs to be said that those sleds do get pulled out of the water, in mm -hmm. case you're wondering. This carrier is something that the American public can really be proud of. Absolutely. Elsewhere, and for the sailors and Marines serving aboard ships in the Arabian Gulf, the threat of mines is very real. Now, for that reason, the Navy keeps minesweepers forward deployed in the Arabian Gulf to keep the sea lanes open and protect Fifth Fleet ships year-round. One of those minesweepers on station protecting the George Washington, Nimitz, and the rest of Fifth Fleet is USS Ardent. Let's meet the crew of Ardent and see just what it's like to serve on these small ships with a big mission. Ardent. That's what these sailors have to be when hunting for mines in an area as volatile as the Arabian Gulf. Staying focused on their critical mission, these sailors map out a blanket of mine protection for U.S. and Allied ships charting important areas of coverage requested by the fleet commander. And then they turn to their little shark-like friend. I'm a mine neutralization system pilot. We uh, fly a little submersible vehicle out to mines and uh, neutralize them with this vehicle. The vehicle, which has a camera aboard, is lowered into the water and a mineman pilots it below the surface by remote control above the mine, sometimes thousands of feet away from the ship. And piloting this vehicle is actually kind of fun. I enjoy it. I, I, I came from the cruiser navy to the minesweep navy, and uh, I enjoy the minesweepers. I think for people starting out, a good platform. And if you're a team player, the minesweeper navy is for you. You have to work together all the time. There's it's a lot of cross training. The deck guys work up here and we work deck and everyone's integrated together. It's, it's like one team, not separate departments working apart from one another. That teamwork has USS Arden running like clockwork in this real world scenario. Arden crew prepared real well. As far as on response, we're quick, we're accurate, and we're on time and it's a real, real good response crew. A crew full of well-rounded sailors keeping thousands of their shipmates safe from an unseen threat. And the crew members of the Ardent are some of the best sailors in the fleet, as mm -hmm. are all the minesweeper sailors, because they're highly trained mm -hmm. and they're ready to handle any situation. You saw the seaman apprentice in that story with a warfare pin. It is obviously a good place to go if you want to get well-rounded. Absolutely. Now, last week, we introduced the new All Hands Magazine's Owner and Operator Edition. We just wanted to remind you again, this magazine is full of great information, so go get yourself a copy and hang on to it. You can have it for the whole year. You definitely yeah. can use it. Now, stay tuned, because when we come back, we'll take you to the North American International Auto Show for a look at the hottest cars on the road. Cool. Don't want to miss that. <laughs> How you doing today? My name is James DeBrent. I'm a former Marine Corporal with Headquarters Battery, 1st Battalion, 12th Marines. We're here today at the Detroit Auto Show celebrating Mr. Bibbs, the Michelin Man's 100th birthday. Let me tell you something, I changed my fair share of tires in the Marine Corps, but now I work for Michelin. And please, stay tuned for more Navy Marine Corps news. Imagine what it would be like if the next time you visited a foreign country, you didn't have to leave your family on the pier you would take them with you. And one of the best places to do this is Shore Duty in Japan. You and your family will have memories of a lifetime as you become acquainted with a new culture. Whether you're single or married, you'll be enriched by a tour in the Orient. If you're in line for Shore Duty, contact your detailer for more information about duty in Japan. Hi, this is HM1 David Bolton. I'm in the Ready Reserve, stationed at Selfridge Air National Guard, Detroit, Michigan. I'm here enjoying the 1998 North American International Auto Show. Now, back to some Navy and Marine Corps news. Take it away, Staff Sergeant and JO2. Thanks, HM1. He looked like he was having a blast oh, there, yeah. didn't he? Welcome back to Navy Marine Corps News. Now, 1998 is here, and so are the newest cars and trucks available to sailors and Marines. Yeah, the biggest display of these cars is the North American International Auto Show. Petty Officer Christina Brockman journeyed to the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, and gives us a look at the newest means of getting from point A to B. Hi, everyone. I'm here at the North American International Auto Show in Detroit. Look at all these fabulous vehicles around me. We're going to take a look at the 98s and the futuristic concept cars. First though, let's start by taking a look at the new vehicles you may be looking to buy. 
The great thing about the Mazda Protégé is lots of trunk space. And throwing your baggage, pop down part of the back seat, put in your skis, and still have room for another back passenger. Everyone has to wear a seat belt. But if you tend to be a little bit on the short side, like myself, seat belts can be a little bit uncomfortable. Luckily though, vehicles like this Hyundai Accent have an adjustable seat belt, so you can drive in comfort. Taking a look underneath the hood here, you'll notice that the entire engine compartment was designed to be very user friendly, perfect for the do-it-yourselfer. We have see-through fluid containers with large wide mouth openings, easy to access spark plugs, as you can see there, right on top of the engine here, no problem to get to those plugs. Color-coded dipsticks, easy to access air filter, able to get that out with just virtually in a couple of seconds there. And you also notice that we have a centrally located fuse and a relay center, so you actually can stand on your feet, looking underneath the hood, changing your fuses instead of crawling underneath the dash. And I'd like to show you one more thing here at Saturn. One of the features that helps to keep Saturn unique and also is one of the reasons that we have such a high resale value. All the uh, areas on the outside of our vehicles, the vertical portions, the front and rear fascias and bumpers, the doors, the quarter panels, the fenders, are all made out of a durable thermoplastic, and therefore are two to four times more dent and ding resistant than steel. Why don't I go ahead and show you? Another sporty vehicle is the new Ford ZX2. It also comes standard with the fold-down back seats to extend your trunk space, and with a two-liter 16-valve engine, it'll get you where you need to go with style. Well, a lot of people think, oh, we brought the old Beetle back. The answer is really no. The shape is reminiscent, obviously, but beyond that, it's based on the new golf platform. So the, the men in the services over there in Europe will know about the new golf. It's just been introduced. One of those we've carried over is the old Bud Base, which was in some of the early Beetles. We have the round instrument cluster with the round speedometer, which is reminiscent again. And one final touch is the old vinyl grab handles back here. So far, we've seen a lot of nice cars that you might be thinking about buying. But this one is the one that's on my dream list. I wonder how these are made. Hi, I'm Michael Joseph, and you're at the Dearborn Water Swimming Plant, the only place in the world where the Mustang is built. Hey, let's go see how America's car is really built. What we're seeing right now is the center pan. This is the beginning of the assembly process. The uh, robot will take the center pan and set it in motion on a conveyor. We call this the marriage, where we'll marry the center pan, the front end, and the rear end. This is the body side. Again, how we put the side of the car onto the body. Now what they'll do, they'll take both sides to the car. You can see now they're lining it up into the hole, and then they will put it together with a little tab. And all this does is to hold the car together until we go to the body buck. And that's where the car is gonna go into a buck where it will be held together by welds. Hey, this is the fender. I'm a fender fitter. I put the fender on. I have to tighten the screws down on it. And then I have to also put hinges in it to kind of rise it up or to raise the fender up level with the hood. Now, the hood is made out of fiberglass. So again, instead of uh, making the car heavy, we'll use fiberglass. In this area, we have some people who fit the car and also do the final metal work and metal prep. Uh, any defects that they find in the surface, you watch his operation, he'll fill the various panels, and he'll also when open the car. This operator will inspect it for any foreign materials, any foreign matter, to make sure you get a quality surface. But now the car is ready to go to be painted. Well, we hope you enjoyed your tour. And on behalf of the men and women of the Dearborn Summit Plant, we thank you for being the best armed forces in the world, the best sailors and marines in the world. And until next time, go Mustang. Well, another dream road machine for some is a vehicle that many sailors and marines are quite familiar with. 
But if you're not quite ready to take this Hummer on the highway, maybe an SUV is more your style. As I mentioned, the key behind this vehicle is versatility. As you can see here, we have two rows of seats. This is the only compact sport utility with three rows of seats. The seats fold down very easily. If you're going on vacation or you have a lot of work that you want to, uh, that you want to do with the vehicle, you're towing or something like that, while the seats are off, obviously you can, you can carry passengers, but then once everything is folded down, you now have seven flat feet to carry wood or boxes or vacation gear or whatever you need for a trip. It all looks great. Thanks a lot, Mike. Great. Glad to show you the new Dodge Durango. If you don't need to carry a lot of passengers, but you need the cargo space, maybe a compact truck is what you're looking for. This Nissan Frontier has the largest cargo bed in its class, and it can be separated into various sections. This ledge right here can be used to separate it horizontally, or this slot right here can be used to separate it vertically. Either way, it's great for the do-it-yourselfer. Okay, Joe, now what is new about the 98 Ford Ranger? Well, for 1998, we have restyled the Ranger, but also in the middle of the model year, we have increased the, uh, car, or the, um, the space here um, for a roomier cab. We've also added lumbar support and new fabrics and more comfortable seating. And of course the biggest change is the fourth door which provides uh, easier uh, access uh, for gear whether it be for work or for play. And uh, we have seating here for fourth and uh, third passengers as well. And uh, this helps you uh, get to your jack easily, keeps it very concealed. Here's another truck, but this one is a little bit different. Vehicles nowadays are becoming more environmentally friendly, and this one is electric. Someday, instead of pulling up to the pump, you might be plugging in at home. Automakers are also creating electric cars and engines run by a fuel cell. These, along with natural gas and low emission vehicles, will help keep the environment clean. Automakers are also trying to increase fuel efficiency by losing weight. This all aluminum unibody comes in at under 200 pounds. It's a great concept for the future. And the cars of the future are already on display. Check them out. You name it, they got it. There's plenty of the sporty vehicles, hardtop or convertible, a hybrid station wagon with a glass hatchback, and for truck enthusiasts, there's this concept pickup truck. There's also concept SUVs for those who want to go off the beaten path and travel the highways with the same vehicle. One even has a small camera in back with a monitor by the driver. Is it the future of mirrors? You decide. Not enough? How about a car with a pop-down, full-color TV screen and reclining back seats so you can be in comfort while watching your favorite show? I know it's rough, but I think I could handle it. Hey, get out of that prowler! Whoops. <laughs> From the North American International Auto Show, I'm Petty Officer Christina Brockman. Cool show. But you know, two and a half kids ago, I might have gone for that yellow Prowler, but I'm, I'm kind of stuck on those big sport utility vehicles. I thought you would have been a Humvee driver or something <laughs> like that. Oh, that was neat. Concept cars were cool. I also like how we got a look at the Mustang play. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever seen something like that before. We actually get to see how they're built up close. And uh, after all these years, the Mustang is really a work of art. Absolutely. Now, if you consider yourself an artist, running enthusiast, or you just like to draw, listen up, because the Marine Corps Marathon Foundation has announced the opening of its yearly poster contest. If you're an active duty or reserve sailor or Marine, here's your chance to have your talents featured in one of the premier running events in the world. All entries must be received by February 15th. Now, for more information, call 703-784-2225. Winners will receive a round-trip airline ticket to anywhere in the continental United States. Yeah, two of them. Hey. When we come back, Super Bowl predictions from the fleet. Don't go away. Hi, this is Sharon Warner from the Dearborn Assembly Plant. We're here building the Ford Mustangs. So I'd like to say hello to my son, Wesley Warner, aboard the John C. Stennis. And you're watching the Navy Marine Corps News. The fact is, alcohol and driving don't mix. Even one or two drinks can make a difference between safe driving and something else. And then tragedy happens, an innocent life is snuffed out, the promise of a lifetime is over, and the pain never ends for those left behind. There are consequences.
Thanks for coming back. Well, because the Navy is always on station and ready, many ships and squadrons will be deployed during one of the biggest sporting events in the world. Yeah, but hopefully most sailors and Marines will get a chance to see it. Mm -hmm. Super Bowl 32 will be taking place January 25th in San Diego. The defending Super Bowl champion Green Bay Packers are heavily favored against the underdog Denver Broncos. The Super Bowl is a game that even the most casual fan has interest in. It seems like everyone has a favorite team or an opinion on which team will bring home the trophy. Here's Petty Officer Tom Crydell with a sampling of what sailors and Marines have to say about the big game. Super Bowl Sunday, it's the biggest sporting event of the year, and you can bet no matter where they are, sailors and Marines will find a way to catch the game. Now you might choose to watch the game at a base club, like Pier 26 here at Norfolk Naval Base. Or if you're underway, you may catch the game in a cruise lounge, like this one aboard USS Dwight D. Eisenhower. Or you might just find your favorite easy chair, kick your feet up, and watch the game at home. This year's Super Bowl pits John Elway and the AFC champion Denver Broncos against Brett Favre and the defending world champion Green Bay Packers. The Broncos will try to become the first AFC team since the 83 Raiders to win the Super Bowl, while the heavily favored Packers will try to take the title back to title town for the fourth time and second year in a row. We asked some amateur prognosticators what they think. I think Denver's gonna take it. Um, I think they just right now have everything going for them and I think it's always here. I think it's his, his time to get it. I like Green Bay because they've got Brett Favre and they've been there before. They've got the defense. Uh, they just got all the tools and they're starting to roll now. Uh, they look like the hot team going into the Super Bowl. Green Bay, I mean, all the way. Back-to-back um, -back Super Bowl, you got Brett Favre, got the best defense in the world, NFC. The Green Bay Packers, because they won the last year. I really want Denver because I hate Green Bay. They went to, they won Super Bowl already. It's time for somebody else to take the place. Denver because uh, John Elway is a very good quarterback and uh, I'm a Cowboys fan but Denver um, they have shown a lot of improvements this year and uh, I'm a big fan of Elway. While most people we talk to like the Packers to repeat, there's a few fans out there who think the Broncos can finally break through and win their first Super Bowl. Hopefully it'll be a great game no matter who wins. And if your team's not in the Super Bowl, well, there's always next year. From my living room, I'm Petty Officer Tom Crydell. Great venue for the game. Mm -hmm. Hopefully some of the sailors and marines stationed out at San Diego will get a chance to go to the game. And another special thing about this year's game is that sailors and marines that are forward deployed will be able to see it. We have a photographer aboard USS Guam and we hope to have that story for you. Sailors will get a chance to see it through something called the Direct to Sailor Television Network. It's a great network. Make sure you tune in once you get it. Now, I'm not a big football guru, but I'm going with Green Bay. Well, who I want to win and who I think are going to win are two different things. 35-17 <laughs> Green Bay is my prediction. Yeah. But if the football gods are watching, hopefully they'll give John Elway what he deserves. <laughs> Earlier in the show, we took you to the North American International Auto Show, and with the topic of cars in mind, Cyber Sailor went to the net. Let's see what he found. Take it away, Cyber Sailor. I bet there's at least one sailor or marine out there looking for a new vehicle, especially after seeing JL3 Brockman's expedition to the Detroit Auto Show. Now, if you're like me and you hate going to car lots to get that hard sell pitch from those salesmen, here, check this out. We're going to go on the internet and start with CarPoint. Here I found six helpful categories, kind of like classifieds, where you basically do a search for a particular vehicle and they find it for you. Here you can also look at the vehicle, see the specs, compare the vehicles, check pricing, look for a dealer. All you have to do next is take it for a test drive. Oh, and check this out, a Blue Book value site where you can find out what your current car is worth or get the blue book value on the car you are thinking about buying. Here's another site, the AutoWeb, similar to CarPoint. It also has several categories like new cars, used cars, and financing. But don't stop there. Car buying on the internet is booming with sites and information. Here's another site for you, NetMarket. They offer a lot of the same information, but hey, you can't really get enough information, can you? Don't just buy the first vehicle you come to. You have got to do the research to get the best deals. And you can also check out car manufacturer websites. Plymouth Voyager. I see a lot of these in the commissary parking lot. How about the Ford Escort? Cool, and a big change from the old Escorts. What about the Chevy Cavalier? This car is a top pick in many auto magazines. Oh, and uh, speaking of auto magazines, here's a few of them I found, and trust me, there is lots of information you can find here, too. 
check out Auto Week. Some great reviews can be found here. And what about Car and Driver? Lots of great information and links to other sites. Also, go to Auto Axle. As you can see, some of these sites require paying membership, which may not be bad due to the amount of information you can find here. Now, I know that's a lot of information, kind of like in the 70s when they tried to see how many people they can get in a Volkswagen Beetle. Speaking of Beetle, there's a new 90s version. Check it out on the internet. And who knows, maybe you can break that record of the 70s. Just a thought. And send me your thoughts, and let's not forget the Cyber Sailor Challenge of the best command home pages. The USS John McCain, looking good. For Navy Marine Corps News, I'm Petty Officer Freddie Rodrig. I was talking to Cyber Sailor last night. One thing he told me to let you all know is if you're inquiring about a vehicle and you give your name and phone number to any of these sites, expect a call. They will mm -hmm. call you. They might be aggressive. That's right. Now, it's something you definitely want to keep in mind, but I think I'll head there for the best price on my new SUV. Yeah, it's a good resource, some great sites. That is the show for this week. Mm -hmm. As always, we'd like to hear your thoughts and ideas about Navy Marine Corps news, so call our feedback line or send us an email. The number and address are coming up in a minute, but before we go, bravo Zulu to ET2 Scott Arnett of Assault Craft Unit 4 in Norfolk, Virginia. ET2 Arnett was recently presented the Navy's Gold Disc Award for Creativity and Initiative. For this initiative, he received a letter of commendation and a cash award of 500 bucks. Not bad way to go, Petty Officer Arnett. Now, we'd like to say hello and thanks for watching to sailors and Marines aboard USS Guam, therefore deployed in the Mediterranean. Our thanks for watching. Also go out to our viewers in North Adams, Massachusetts, who watch us every week on Northern Berkshire Community Television. Now we leave you this week with another look at some spectacular concept cars on display at the North American Auto Show. Have a great week. Take care. Hi everyone, I'm here at the North American International Auto Show in Detroit. Look at all these fabulous vehicles around me. We're going to take a look at the 98s and the futuristic concept cars. First though, let's start by taking a look at the new vehicles you may be looking to buy. The great thing about the Mazda Protégé is lots of trunk space. You can throw in your baggage, pop down part of the back seat, put in your skis, and still have room for another back passenger. Everyone has to wear a seat belt. But if you tend to be a little bit on the short side, like myself, seat belts can be a little bit uncomfortable. Luckily though, vehicles like this Hyundai Accent have an adjustable seat belt, so you can drive in comfort. Taking a look underneath the hood here, you'll notice that the entire engine compartment was designed to be very user-friendly, perfect for the do-it-yourselfer. We have see-through fluid containers with large wide mouth openings. Easy to access spark plugs, as you can see there. Right on top of the engine here, no problem to get to those plugs. Color-coded dipsticks. Easy to access air filter. Able to get that out with just virtually in a couple of seconds there. And you also notice that we have a centrally located fuse and a relay center, so you actually can stand on your feet, looking underneath the hood, changing your fuses instead of crawling underneath the dash. 
And I'd like to show you one more thing here at Saturn. One of the features that helps to keep Saturn unique and also is one of the reasons that we have such a high resale value. All the uh, areas on the outside of our vehicles, the vertical portions, the front and rear fascias and bumpers, the doors, the quarter panels, the fenders, are all made out of a durable thermoplastic and therefore are two to four times more dent and ding resistant than steel. Why don't I go ahead and show you. Another sporty vehicle is the new Ford ZX2. It also comes standard with the fold down back seats to extend your trunk space and with a two liter 16 valve engine, it'll get you where you need to go with style. Well, a lot of people think, oh, we brought the old Beetle back. The answer is really no. The shape is reminiscent, obviously, but beyond that, it's based on the new golf platform. So the, the men in the services over there in Europe will know about the new golf, it's just been introduced. One of those we've carried over is the old Bud Base, which was in some of the early Beetles. We have the round instrument cluster with the round speedometer, which is reminiscent again. And one final touch is the old vinyl grab handles back here. So far we've seen a lot of nice cars that you might be thinking about buying. But this one is the one that's on my dream list. I wonder how bees are made. Hi, I'm Michael Joseph, and you're at the Dearborn Swimming Plant, the only place in the world where the Mustang is built. Hey, let's go see how America's car is really built. What we're seeing right now is the center pan. This is the beginning of the assembly process. The uh, robot will take the center pan and set it in motion on a conveyor. We call this a marriage, where we'll marry the center pan, the front end, and the rear end. This is the body side. Again, how we put the side of the car onto the body. Now what they'll do, they'll take both sides to the car. As you see now, they're lining it up into the hole. And then they will put it together with a little tab. And all this does is to hold the car together until we go to the body buck. And that's where the car is going to go into a buck where it will be held together by welds. Hey, this is the fender. I'm a fender fitter. I put the fender on. I have to tighten the screws down on it. And then I have to also put hinges in it to kind of rise it up or to raise the fender up level with the hood. Now the hood is made out of fiberglass. So again, instead of uh, making the car heavy, we'll use fiberglass. In this area, we have some people who fit the car and also do the final metal work and metal prep. Uh, any defects that they find in the surface, he watches operation. He'll fill the various panels. And he'll also when open the car. This operator will inspect it for any foreign materials, any foreign matter to make sure you get a quality surface. Well, now the car is ready to go to be painted. Well, we hope you enjoyed your tour. And on behalf of the men and women of the Dearborn Swimming Plant, we thank you for being the best armed forces in the world, the best sailors and marines in the world. And until next time, go Mustang. Well, another dream road machine for some is a vehicle that many sailors and marines are quite familiar with. But if you're not quite ready to take this Hummer on the highway, maybe an SUV is more your style. As I mentioned, the key behind this vehicle is versatility. As you can see here, we have two rows of seats. This is the only compact sport utility with three rows of seats. The seats fold down very easily. If you're going on vacation or you have a lot of work that you want to, uh, that you want to do with the vehicle, you're towing or something like that, while the seats are off, obviously you can, you can carry passengers, but then once everything is folded down, you now have seven flat feet to carry wood or boxes or vacation gear or whatever you need for a trip. It all looks great. Thanks a lot, Mike. Great. Glad to show you the new Dodge Durango. If you don't need to carry a lot of passengers, but you need the cargo space, maybe a compact truck is what you're looking for. This Nissan Frontier has the largest cargo bed in its class, and it can be separated into various sections. This ledge right here can be used to separate it horizontally 
or this slot right here can be used to separate it vertically. Either way, it's great for the do-it-yourselfer. Okay, Joe, now what is new about the 98 Ford Ranger? Well, for 1998, we have restyled the Ranger, but also in the middle of the model year, we have increased the, uh, car, or the, uh, the space here um, for a roomier cab. We've also added lumbar support and new fabrics and more comfortable seating. And of course, the biggest change is the fourth door, which provides uh, easier uh, access uh, for gear, whether it be for work or for play. And uh, we have seating here for fourth and uh, third passengers as well. And uh, this helps you uh, get to your jack easily, keeps it very concealed. Here's another truck, but this one is a little bit different. Vehicles nowadays are becoming more environmentally friendly, and this one is electric. Someday, instead of pulling up to the pump, you might be plugging in at home. Automakers are also creating electric cars and engines run by a fuel cell. These, along with natural gas and low emission vehicles, will help keep the environment clean. Automakers are also trying to increase fuel efficiency by losing weight. This all aluminum unibody comes in at under 200 pounds. It's a great concept for the future. And the cars of the future are already on display. Check them out. You name it, they got it. There's plenty of the sporty vehicles, hardtop or convertible, a hybrid station wagon with a glass hatchback, and for truck enthusiasts, there's this concept pickup truck. There's also concept SUVs for those who want to go off the beaten path and travel the highways with the same vehicle. One even has a small camera in back with a monitor by the driver. Is it the future of mirrors? You decide. Not enough? How about a car with a pop-down, full-color TV screen and reclining back seats so you can be in comfort while watching your favorite show? I know it's rough, but I think I could handle it. Hey, get out of that prowler! Whoops. <laughs> From the North American International Auto Show, I'm Petty Officer Christina Brockman. Ardent. That's what these sailors have to be when hunting for mines in an area as volatile as the Arabian Gulf. Staying focused on their critical mission, these sailors map out a blanket of mine protection for U.S. and Allied ships, charting important areas of coverage requested by the fleet commander, and then they turn to their little shark-like friend. I made mine neutralization system pilot. We uh, fly a little submersible vehicle out to mines and uh, neutralize them with this vehicle. The vehicle, which has a camera aboard, is lowered into the water and a mineman pilots it below the surface by remote control above the mine, sometimes thousands of feet away from the ship. And piloting this vehicle is actually kind of fun. I enjoy it. Uh, I, I came from the cruiser navy to the minesweep navy, and uh, I enjoy the minesweepers. I think for people starting out, a good platform. And if you're a team player, the minesweeper navy is for you. You have to work together all the time. There's, it's a lot of cross training. Uh, the deck guys work up here, and we work deck, and everyone's integrated together. It's, it's like one team, not separate departments working apart from one another. That teamwork has USS Ardent running like clockwork in this real-world scenario. Ardent crews prepare real well. As far as on response, we're quick, we're accurate, and we're on time, and it's a real, real good response crew. A crew full of well-rounded sailors, keeping thousands of their shipmates safe from an unseen threat. The Young Marines is a program supported by the Marine Corps for kids ages 8 to 18. It offers opportunities for new experiences, adventures, and challenges. Recently, the Deputy Secretary of Defense, John Hamry, visited with these bright children to talk about their future and to ask them how they felt about the program. Tell me about your classes. Um, they're mili we, have, we learn military knowledge, of course, and um, they teach us certain things, how to wear the proper uniform. The young Marines learn the same values taught to all Marines in boot camp. It told me integrity. It told me discipline and to get along with others. Parents involved with the program agree it's a great success. She's more outspoken in certain things. She's not as shy as she used to be. She was real timid at first. For the Marines who give their time for the young Marines, it's a very rewarding experience. Rewarding? Definitely got to be their faces. 
And also when you know you've taught them something, after a couple of months down the road, you hear them teaching a younger young Marine, same things you taught them. In honor of Martin Luther King Day, the young Marines put on a play for the deputy sec dep. Free at last, free at last, thank God almighty, we're free at last. Following the play, Deputy Sec Def Hamry explained the link between Dr. King's philosophy and the young Marines. To look for the best in other people and to build their dignity and not tear them down. That's what Dr. King was all about, and I think that's what young Marines are about. Frankly, that's what old Marines are about. Young Marines is a great program that's been giving children a taste of the Corps since 1979. Lance Corporal David Anarino, Navy Marine Corps News.